Hello. Welcome to Sam. Yeah, one more. Yes. Um, Saturday, today. Um, beautiful sun, New York City. Um, and perfect day to make above Bourguignon. Um, so we are waiting for people to connect now. In, um, and we start in one minute. I hope you're well today. Um, and happy to make this very, very French again. Um, recipe. Um, it's going to be very easy, um, probably less than half an hour to do that, but then it takes a lot of time to cook. Um, have you done the other recipes before? If yes, please post them, send them, show me what you did. Um, I received a lot of messages um, already and that was very, very nice. So I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed this um, series. I, was, I woke up a little bit stressed today, I don't know why, maybe because it's the third one um, and um, a little bit tense, but it should be okay. It's a recipe I used to do, it's very easy. What time is it? It's one o'clock. Is it one? Yes. Well, okay, so we are going to start um, very soon when everyone's here. Okay. Let's go. So, today, Boeuf Bourguignon. Um, Boeuf Bourguignon is a very, very classic and um, popular uh, French recipe. There is thousands of Boeuf Bourguignon. Like each one make his, his own Bourguignon as a way to make it with a little thing here and a little thing here and not that and that and that and that. But the story of the Boeuf Bourguignon is um, it was made by, by, in the countryside by farmers with the end of the beast, with the poor part of the beast. So it's not a, a fancy plate. So the most important in the Boeuf Bourguignon is not really the meat, is the action of the wine. And it became Boeuf Bourguignon um, because it was made mostly in this region of Bourgogne and they are known for their cow and for their wine. So that's why it became for Boeuf Bourguignon. But you have all kinds of Bourguignon. There is even a Japanese and a Korean Boeuf Bourguignon. I will give you um, the recipe at the end of um, this class. It's um, a little bit different and extremely, extremely, extremely delicious. So what do you need for the Bourguignon? We need meat, of course. We need an onion, we need carrots, we need bacon, this is optional, you don't need, if you don't eat bacon, don't put bacon, if you don't eat carrots, don't eat carrots, you can put something else. We need a little bit of butter and herbs, thyme, bay leaf, rosemary and a little bit of ginger, I will let you know, I will tell you why a little bit of ginger, okay? Knife, a pot with a cover. If you don't have Dutch oven like that, it's okay, you can make that in a big pot or just in a regular thing like that as soon as you can cover it. Okay, so first the onion. I'm going to cut it and I'm going to give you a little trick about the onion. Have you ever tried all kinds of things to not cry when you're peeling an onion? So you put glasses, a thing on your head, a match in your mouth, all of that, and it never works. Yes, it never works. Why? Because the onion, when you press it, I'm going to show you. When you cut the onion, there is, the onion is, is spraying his juice, like the coronavirus, the same. So the best way to not cry when you cut the onion is to stay far from the onion, your hands, like that, and straight, not like that. If you do that, you get everything in your eyes. Onion distancing, distancing, distancing. <laughs> Onion distancing, yes. So up, far from the onion. So to cut it well, the onion, like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
and you don't need to go all the way down. And then you turn the onion this way and much more. Am I crying? Absolutely not. Nothing. Look at that. Dry. Up. Okay, it can be like it doesn't need to be very, very, very small. It's fine. Like that, it's okay. Once again, up, up, not all the way down. You don't need to. Then it stays together. Up, 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 up. Up, turn. Think my. Now it needs a little of attention. Here the other But olive oil. Be generous. Up. A little bit of butter. Why a little bit of butter? Because when you um, sear something with the olive oil, it's very good. But when you sear with butter, you add butter in the olive oil, it gives a nice taste for sure, and but also a nice color. If you try that for a vegetable, for example, um, you sear a vegetable with olive oil, it's perfect. You sear with butter, the color of the, of the vegetable will be absolutely beautiful. Put all of that in the pan. Thank you. And hop. Medium high. While this is happening, we are going to prepare the bacon. Oh. So this is ends of bacon. So you go to the butcher and you ask for ends of bacon. It's very cheap. And it's really good because what we need is the fat of the bacon. So cut it like that. Trust me, after a few hours of cooking, they will almost completely disappear and melt. You won't feel them. Up. Yes. Remember, if you have questions, you can ask the question. My lover is just behind the camera. Hey, lover. And he's watching your questions. Oh yes, yeah, someone um, asked two days ago, oh, um, because it's horizontal, we can't really read the comments. Yes, we try vertical, but the image vertical is very, very narrow, like that, so we don't see the kitchen and we don't see what I'm doing. So we try the horizontal and then it's easier when we post it on the website. Now the carrots. So this, oh, this is French. Opinel. We know that it's the best way. Big fight between French and American. Should we use an American peeler or a French peeler? I can't do with the American one. I need the French one. Throwing that in the garbage? Absolutely not. Keep them. You rinse your carrots before and you keep that and you're going to make chips with that. It's really, really good. Any carrots? Why do you think the French peeler is best? Do you really want the answer to that? Um, I don't know. Isn't everything French is good? No? It's better? Well, it doesn't move. I don't know. Right? It's like... The, the Americans, they like... The Americans, they are moving, yeah. So every time I cut my finger with, like, like a razor, so you know the gillette, when you cut, the, the thing is moving like that. And every time I use the American one, I cut my finger. With this one, never. 
Because it's just a straight blade that goes into the hand. Yeah, I think it's just the heavy. And I still have to like take French side some, sometimes. I, as I told you last time, I became American a few months ago. But I still have to show that like, I'm a little bit French. Okay, so you keep all of that to make nice chips. Are you going to show people how to make the chips? Oh yeah, I, I'll explain you how to make that. Okay. So here the goal is to make sure that the, the onions are uh, melting a little bit but not getting brown. Absolutely not, we don't want that. So if it's too high, just lower the heat. The camera will come after you, don't worry. You don't need to see that now. It's not very interesting. Hop, we cut that. You can also keep that. I'll show you what to do with. So the other one is getting yellow now, very dead yellow. So I don't know how much meat you got today, but I have um, six pounds of meat, so approximately three kilo. So we can have like uh, three kilo means uh, uh, eight, nine people can can eat. So I have already two, my neighbors across the street, they made an order, and my landlord, he loves my bourguignon. And he even told me once, it's the best bourguignon I ever had, even in France, I never had a bourguignon like that. And trust me, we have to keep, in this period, we have to keep a very good relationship with your landlord. Right here, Steven, three. Sure. So you see the onions? It's yellow. It doesn't brown yet. We wait. And we are going to sear the meat. So sear in French is saisir. Saisir meat. So the meat is here, we put the meat here and with the heat, the meat will make oh like that. The muscle will get super strong. Why? That will make it softer after. Don't ask me why. Try on your lover. Pinch your lover. So see the meat as it is. Up, up, up. Up, up, up. You can put now the heat a little bit higher. And you let the meat, you sear it like on every side, like that. Like that. And not too much, not too much brown, like just That's the advance. 
That's what the, that was the advice of my friend Florence in Brazil. Hi, Florence. And what kind of cut do you get for the meat? Uh, well, so this one is called, at, the, at my butcher, Paisanos on Smith Street, it's called um, a beef stew, they call that. Again, every, every part is good. Don't get the very expensive part, don't get filet or stuff like that. The really one I love very, very much is the cheek of the beef. Um, it's pretty difficult to find here. There's a uh, frozen, not in France, it's very easy to find cheek. But most of the pieces are good. You can try with actually the, the, um, the piece you like the most. But this is, yeah, it's called, I think it's a, a paleron. It's the, something coming from the butt. The flank. I don't know, yeah. Anything coming from the butt is good, right? So, okay, let's put this one again. A few minutes. It's already smelling very, very good. Okay. And this is done. Take it out. Let it rest a little bit. And we are going to do exactly the same. With the bacon. making way to show you something so you remember my dad my mom uh, my, my grandma but I never show you my mom my mom was an incredible cook she was cooking every single day three meals every day different we we're begging her to have burger every day and she was saying no way no way and she was cooking every every day so I found two pictures of my mom here with me that's in the south of France. And guess who is in the stroller here? I'm um, like, what, one here? And that's when I was 20, dancing with her. And um, her name was Lucy. And I always thought like she called me Lucy, uh, Lucien, because they didn't really think about the name and they just say, oh, Lucien, let's do Lucien. But very recently I talked to my brother about that. And my brother said, oh, no, there's a good reason for that. Your dad was so in love with your mom, like everything was related to her. Every single thing. So that's why they called you Lucien, because Lucien was the masculine of Lucy. Cute, no? Okay, so look. Bacon is good. Bacon has really also. And now, what you're going to do is to get. So when we cook the meat here and the bacon, there is the sap of the meat, the sap, S A P, right? Mm -hmm. The fluid, you know, sure. that. And this is um, um, stuck on the pan. So with a little bit of wine. You get all this, and with a wooden spoon, it's trapped like that very well. Yeah. See? And you let it fume, and it's okay when it stops fuming. 
put that low. Smell. Okay, so now back to that. With the juice, with everything. With the carrots. So why a little bit of ginger? My friend Martin, who has a restaurant in Saint-Rémy-de-Provence, in the south of France, one day told me this amazing thing. She said, oh, you should put a little bit of ginger that will wake up your dishes. So now, almost every time, I put a little bit of a little bit of ginger, really, just a little bit, that's enough. And even if it doesn't make really anything, at least I'm thinking of her. Hi, Martin. And now, to finish the wine. And you cover everything with the wine. So you must have wine all the way on the top. Look, this is old bottles, never through the wine, even there is little that, keep them. Because you can use it for a bourguignon, and if you keep it even more, it becomes vinegars. So don't throw the wine. Up. And now you go high. Hey, so no salt or pepper? Yeah, yeah, so it's coming, coming, coming. It's coming, it's coming. Salt and pepper. As I told you last time, I don't put too much salt. I don't put too much salt. I don't like that very much. Especially here, there's bacon already, so no need to put so much salt because the bacon is very salty already. You mix all of that. And you, went, you wait until it gets to a broil. And when it starts boiling, that means we are ready for a few hours of cooking. So, as I told you at the beginning, that's okay, we can come back. Okay. I think. As I told you at the beginning, the secret of the bourguignon, uh, let's wait, Stephen, to put back the phone. Good. Mm -hmm. So the secret of the bourguignon is the action of the wine on the meat. So the meat is going to just drink and soak all this wine slowly, slowly, slowly. How long you should cook it, it really depends the way you love the meat. If you love the meat a little bit hard, two, maybe three hours, if you love the meat very, very soft, that's the way we, we like it. You can leave it for five hours. You're going to leave it not on the broil, but simmering and cover for three, four, five, it can be even seven hours. It's fine, it's okay. Just sometimes look inside and try. Um, the way I like it is when you take a piece of meat and uh, the meat comes in your hand like that. You don't even need um, a, a knife or a fork. To cut it. So let's wait. Um, for that. Did the garlic already go on? Um, I forgot the garlic. You're right. We can put a clove. I totally forgot the garlic. But yes. Let's put some garlic. Like that. That. And always remember, like that, you just press the garlic on the table. And remember to remove the green. If you have green in the garlic, you remove, uh, you remove it because it's very, very bitter. That's it. So let's wait until it's, it broils. Do you have any other questions? And I'm going to tell you what to do with the the beef, what kind of, uh, so you can do, 
potatoes, boiled potatoes, mashed potatoes, make an olive oil mashed potatoes, you boil your potatoes and then when they are boiled you peel them and then you scratch them and then you add slowly, slowly olive oil, not too much until really get thick and nice and not liquid. You can make any gratin like cauliflower gratin, zucchini gratin, um, potato gratin, it's very good, that will be one of the um, the class, all the gratin with bechamel and stuff like that. And of course, you can have green, just salad, it's perfect. And you can have pasta, but my advice is to keep the pasta for the day after, because you're going to have a lot of leftovers um, of the juice um, in, the, in the bourguignon. So if you keep that for the day after, juice and meat, so you keep that for the day after, you make pasta and you mix with this juice, is a little bit of parmesan cheese, it's... Um, okay, we're having a lot of questions about herbs. Yes. What kind of herbs? What, uh, what and when? Yes. The herbs, you put the herbs when it starts to grow, you're going to, sl to um, um, slow the heat, and then we add, add the herbs at okay. the very end. And the garlic should have gone in at what point? Yes, Just the garlic... Now. Whenever? Like, yes, whenever. You put everything together. Like, there's nothing... Nothing is really cooking with the herbs of that, so you put them together. The most important is when you start, you cover it, everything is inside. Okay. Okay? I think that, I think that answers that. Okay. So it takes a moment to grow it because there is a lot of water. Make sure that the meat is really under the... Uh, you can add, some people will add mushrooms also in this. That's very good. One other thing you can do, I went this morning, but there was too much people at the, at the, at the butcher, is to buy a bone, big bone, and you ask the butcher to cut them in pieces like that, and you add them in the juice, and you remove them maybe an hour after, and you will eat that like bone marrow uh, on the side. It's really, really good with like uh, salt, sea salt. So the wine, the, the, the meat is fully submerged in the wine? Yes. You want me to show you? I can show you. I can bring it over there. Oh, I'm coming. Okay. You see? Whoops. You see? Completely. Yes, it's covered. So about a bottle of wine, maybe a bottle yeah, of Yeah, so here for six pounds of, um, of meat, I've put a bottle and a bottle and a half. Okay. You can drink the rest. It's fine. But you can even put everything. It's okay if it's a little bit above. It's fine because the, the first some wine is going to evaporate with the, with the heat, and you'll have just more juice. So it's fine. You can make more pasta the day after. Faster. So it's very very important as soon as the wine is boiling to really reduce to simmering and to cover not completely covered but you leave like a little space like that but it needs to go very 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 slowly so you can do whatever you want you have time um, you're not in a hurry and again it can't burn so it's fine it's okay it will be just more te more tender the more you cook it the more tender it is oh the japanese korean wine I'm going to tell you that in a second. So it's almost the same. So you see, now it's almost boiling. If you have a lot of foam on the top, <coughs> sorry, if you have a lot of foam, you can remove the foam. Just like that. Here there's not so much. But you see, just that. You can remove it. Now it's going to a simmer very low. You add the herbs. So I add thyme. I like when there is a strong taste of herbs. So that's why I'm putting so much rosemary. Can you just put the whole thing in there? Yeah, just the whole thing like that. And bay leaf. Just on the top. And my friends. Just like that, you see? A little bit open. 
flowers. The Korean Japanese. It's a mix. I tried that um, a few weeks ago. So same meat. Instead of wine, you have soya sauce. So first you boil the meat. Just raw and you boil it. 15 minutes. Then you sear it the same way we sear it here. And then you cover the meat with um, the, the broth used to, um, to boil it and um, soya sauce, half and half. And then you add also whatever you want. You can add like um, um, green onions and... Why are you smiling? <laughs> What's going on? Um, and you can add whatever you want um, inside. And say, you let it cook slowly for hours and you will see it's absolutely, absolutely amazing. There are some people, they do the bourguignon, they boil the meat before. It's possible, you can also do that. Again, as I told you, there are thousands of different recipes. Each chef has his own recipe. Okay. More relaxed. I was speed, I was super speed. I told you, I was like a little bit <laughs> stressed today. But it's fine. So, it's cooking. Um, nothing else to say? No. I will introduce you my mom. I thank Stephen. Um, the buff is cooking. I told you what to do on the side. We we'll keep the pasta for tomorrow. I think we are good. We can all go have a nap now or spend a good night. Uh, I'll see you on Monday now. Um, and Monday I will make one of my favorite and actually one of my friend's favorite um, dish, which is uh, the patara salad. It's pasta with salad. Extremely simple. I will post the carrot chips. Yes. Oh yes, the carrot chips. Sorry. Right, carrot chips. Okay. So before peeling them, you rinse the carrots, and maybe sometimes it's if it comes a little bit dirty, you can um, brush them to remove that, and then with a little bit of olive oil in a pan, and you let it. Um, Fry like chips, and you will see they will become nice like that. And when it's very looks cooked, remove them on the paper towel, and for the for the the oil to leave, and then you just eat that, or you use that as a decoration on the on the plate. It's very very good. Excellent. And for last last comment regarding herbs, just. Kind of whatever, rosemary thyme, and as much yes, as you want. Yes, if you want to like, put like just rosemary, you put rosemary. And just like a good handful? Um, it depends. You know, it's very, very strong. So if you like with a strong taste of, um, of herbs, um, usually it's good to make like one branch of thyme, one branch of, uh, of rosemary, and one or two bay leaves. Not more. Bay leaves are very, very strong. It depends also where it comes from. But not too much. Yeah, not the whole thing. Not... Not all of that. That would be too much. But just a branch. This or a little bit more. That's, for example, that's enough. One, two, like that. That's way enough. Again, it depends also how many uh, kilo of meat you have. Do you have other questions? I think that's everything. No, we are good for today. You can still send me questions afterwards on my Instagram. So this video will be available 24 hours on Instagram stories and then on the website of the invisible dog www.theinvisibledog.org um, thank you very much see you on monday for the patara salad um, ashley and irene get ready for your dinner tonight and um, have a delicious delicious um, weekend bye bye